Hello, my name is Jan Yusen. I am a designer, researcher, and entrepreneur. Currently, I'm based in San Francisco. I'm Hong Hao Dan. I'm a computational designer and entrepreneur based in San Francisco. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Butler. So today, we're going to introduce our project, Illusory Material, where we use multi-material 3D printing to create this kind of new material organization that does not exist in physical reality. So illusory material, um, I would say it's a design philosophy or like a new thinking that we use it to break down design medium to create new materialities and new experiences around products, object and environment. So we invented this um, 3D lenticular printing framework to create materials that can display some unique properties that you never saw in reality before. Uh, you might see it in digital animations or like some um, sci-fi fictions, but never in physical realities. Um, and we use this material uh, in different applications like product design or like um, environmental design or even architecture. To me, Lucid Material is a computational method to recreate or generate new materiality in a controlled manner, uh, especially for a material that doesn't exist in physical space before. If we have to summarize this whole project into in one sentence, it's going to be manifest from metamaterial. Because we build all those digital information into the material itself, so we allow those material to display to express themselves in a very unique way. I wouldn't say it's like a flash of inspiration or like we just suddenly come up with this kind of material that does not look real. The reason behind why we launched this project is really one is about the advancement of technology, especially 3D printing and multi-material 3D printing. For myself, like my interest is always like um, to be able to build like architecture or like high performance like build space, build environment in space. So to me my interest is always like the cross section of two things. One, you need the space of the built environment to be like responsive and also intelligent. B, you need something uh, like advanced manufacturing method to be able to recreate things like you know in other planet on the Mars. So that's why like my interest is always in like uh, IoT and uh, 3D printing. Our methodology can allow the physical material to display dynamically by itself, um, not through other medium like electricity or other components. And I think, um, you know, one thing about physical design that is really attractive to me is that you can, you know, they live in the same three dimensional space with us. You can, they're tangible, you can touch them. So your feelings or sensations around those objects is not only through your eyes, but also from the touch, from the smell, from the texture of the surface, you can literally feel. It's not just looking at a screen or reading a digital information or like some data from your monitor. So that's the part we want to keep um, in our design through our methodology. But we also want to introduce a freedom in creating digital material in computers or using computational method into this workflow. Um, in virtual design, there's unlimited resources. You don't have to choose from you know, uh, metal, plastic, clay. But in digital world, it's just a representative of those, like a visualization of different materials you can choose from. And the way you create those mediums is unlimited. You can code millions of ways just to get a final rendering or like a material surface or like a animation. It can never happen in the physical reality. So we want to bridge these two functions or like two features of digital and physical design into one object or subject, which is illusory material. And in the end, we present this workflow that allows designers, artists, or anyone um, to create materials in a very free way, 
just like they create like a rendering in, in a digital computer. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, 3D printing is always like single material based or most, those most common printers you see in the market is like a single material. And it's pretty much um, to fast prototype your digital model into a physical form. And it's about the structure, the geometry, um, the shape of the final thing. But with the development of multi-material 3D printing, we can actually not only modify the form and shapes of the object, but also the material itself. That means we can create materials from scratch. We can create materials that display multiple properties in one single print. So illusory material kind of utilized this feature of this new 3D printing technology. Um, we assign different properties into each pixel of the model. So it can reflect different colors. It looks like a dynamic surface, but completely in the physical form. Mm -hmm. So Ion is sort of like, um, we seeing both words like uh, being more and more advanced. And then we sort of have this kind of like massive standing in between two of them and then be able to bridging this both work couldn't do before, and then generating something like um, in a very efficient manner, generating material that doesn't exist. Because before, why people do renders because of it's way more efficient. Yeah. Uh, to like recreate something like so hard to to get in the physical space. Right, yeah. and and it also feels a little sad because it's like everybody is moving into the digital thing or digital design, but the physical design become much more simple than before and um, not many people they're working on this area anymore. Um, so we really want to recall this kind of excitement in the physical design um, by giving designers that much freedom in creation and different resources designing any object, any physical object or environment or space. So in the same time, like the technology advanced so fast in terms of being able to printing inside and start to control like voxel level of details inside print. So that creates opportunity to engineer the structure property uh, in, inside each slice, make sure it's strong, it's resilient of the outside environment. But the problem is that the modern graphic pipeline or the way we be able to manipulate or create object in virtual space is always single material. If you look at all the games and everything like the 3D model, it's always an empty shell. And then it always represents a single material. So that's why like this project becomes so interesting. We look at the opportunity to be able to create the wheels, to be able to create this kind of new simulation and method to control the material inside. And through this kind of little breaking point, we find a larger opportunity. It's not just on performance, not just on structure or properties of the material, but also be able to engineer material that never exists and display it and create it in physical space. And we don't think, you know, we don't need to separate digital and physical object or concept or even realities in a very clear uh, boundary, we feel um, we can produce amazing physical object with a lot of dif uh, digital information that is pre-embedded into the object itself. One of the intention of like be able to create this kind of new kind of interaction embedded in the object is that we being able to uh, create a new user experience. So for illusory material, there are two basic layers um, inside this kind of material or surface or object. On top is a lenticular lens layer where we use transparent geometry um, that precisely mapped on those curvatures or surface to refract light in different angles. The base layer is the layer where we put patterns, colors into the surface. 
so that in different angles you might see like the object looks entirely red or in another angle you will see the object looks entirely like black and we can control this kind of view based um, color reviewing um, using our computational model. Let's say if we want to design an object like a book or a pen with illusory material, the first thing we would do is really to examine the geometry of that object um, and use our computational model to map the lenticular lenses on top of the geometry so that the curvature matches um, and also the individual lenses can attach to the curvature and refract the light in the way we designed it. Mm -hmm. We did a perfume bottle that is completely transparent from one surface and if you hold the perfume bottle in like 30 degree or 60 degree angle you will see the tags or the product information under the perfume bottle. Um, so just this, just only on this concept I can think a series of product, especially in luxury fashion product, that they care so much about the touch and feeling of that object. They don't want to, you know, kind of um, pollute the feeling without tags or like patterns. Um, they can use our methodology to show a completely pure, transparent, um, you know, packaging. And in the same time, they will not lose any product information, like uh, what's the flavor of this perfume, um, how, um, how much liquid is inside. So this is a very simple example of how to use illusory material um, in a fashion brand or like a, a new product. And we have other you know, projects ongoing. Unfortunately, we cannot disclose too much. Um, and hopefully we will have some new products coming this or next year. So we're off like being to able to manufacturing objects, refining, purifying a very complex like uh, thing directly from the nature and putting into like uh, uh, into steel and then into screws and put all the pieces together, it become like a complex, right? But if you look at nature, as usually you, you look at it, you feel like it's a single material, or a, a plant, or a p object, or a, like a, this kind of like animal's first uh, material behavior. It's like it, it feels like a single material, but you know there's this functionality yeah, there's that embedded inside. Multiple layers inside it, all like multiple cells yeah. properties. It's never single. Mm. So the way we look at meta material is really not the engineering complexity inside. It's really try to catch up like how nature works to create this kind of simplicity on um, achieving certain functions. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's really about perceptions. So people perceive a material based on their previous understanding, and we are kind of create another reality that is different from their original perceptions. Um, like one rigid material does not have to look rigid. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what nature is doing um, originally. This playful differences from your perception and reality is what we want to, like a message we want to, to convey to the audience using illusory material too. And it just gives you a lot of unlimited resources and creations or space for inventions around materiality. Because we're using lenticular um, effects, which means in different viewing angles, you can see the color transition in a very smooth way. It kind of reminds me of a butterfly's wings. So in different angles, you can review certain element of that color. And it kind of reviewed the personality of that animal or object. Um, so we want to achieve the same kind of interaction um, in the physical 3D printed material so that people can use it as like a textile in your, for example, in your coat. And when you move your body around, people can view this kind of transition around you. So I think like the 
ultimate vision there is like, yeah, I'm going to borrow some of the uh, VR producer, virtual reality, those kind of scene makers. They're trying to look into the future that just like Matrix, you don't know whether you are living in a virtual reality or not. Instead, what we want to achieve is that there's a physical object there and then we create it. You don't know whether it's like uh, <laughs> what you look at is the right thing or like uh, the right feeling or perception or not. So that's another way to kind of like um, uh, we are trying to like bridging the gap. I think how human society developed really is like based on the trajectory of turning science fictions to scientific facts. So as a matter of fact, in many different languages, the root of science or technology itself uh, actually start off as a meaning of magic. So when people started to be able to like create fire, they saw this like complete magic. And then later on, they've been processing, uh, recreating, uh, like generating methodology to repeat the process and do so in a better and better way. So I think the way we are doing it is really setting in like an example or sort of at the bridge of like starting to turn something like a sci-fi like a special effect, turning into, slowly turning into a scientific fact. So that's what we are doing here, uh, like uh, bringing out elusive material as a computational method. Um, so on top of it, I think like there's a lot of like science fiction that we really like, like what we are creating, like uh, the experience of elusive material, because like, uh, uh, in nature or like our physical world, most of the materiality we can perceive it in different angles, like three dimensional. But if you manage to uh, do what we do, basically you have a time layer on top of it. You're able to sort of recreate or like um, um, in a controlled manner um, or program this kind of experience a user can get out of it. So we are a, a big fan of this kind of sci-fi movie talking about space and time, uh, like Flatland, like uh, Interstellar, so etc. And there's a very famous Chinese science fiction book called The Three-Body Problem. And they all involve some of the concept of, you know, how can we live in another word that has like 2D dimension or 5D dimension. I feel this dimensional concept is deeply rooted in illusory material because we don't view materials as a single surface or single layer. We add the depth to the material surface. So it's a volumetric concept, a volumetric material. Um, and it can create unique realities out of this material. So in a way, like we're trying to create an object that can store another dimension of information by embedding the interaction, right? So like we'd be able to store this kind of information related to time while people like, uh, you know, changing angle looking at it, they can store different kind of like patterns or colors in it. So you basically embedded a fourth dimension of information which related to time into a uh, like 3D object. So that's something like, um, I think what those movies or novels like give us uh, inspiration. Multi-material 3D printing, um, especially in illusory material, is just one of our explorations around design with emerging technologies. Um, we've done a lot of experimental project using like soft robotics, um, IoT, um, you know, AR, VR. But I think all those topics has a very common theme, which is, you know, waving physical experiences with digital technology. So we want to see how digital information change the way we live physically and the physical object we use every day. And by playing around digital technology or computational design, we can, you know, just bridge these two concepts together um, and blur the lines between them. Um, there's no boundaries between digital and physical design and 
they just intersect with each other and our design methodology can really bridge the two worlds and invent something that has not been seen in both of them. Yes, I, I think like um, uh, one of the things Jiani and I both value is using time uh, to, to validate like uh, whether a technology or a product works or not. Like how things evolve in both human society and also nature world is the same process. So nature have a create a tiny new like a mutation of a certain thing and then time will like prove it whether it works or not. Throughout the time it will create thousands, millions of mutations, but maybe only a few can survive out of it, become the final product of nature. And then this is like a tiny mutation, but like the way we did it is that we're trying to put as much like effort on like uh, testing it out and then just repeating the process of like uh, what nature do with all these mutations. So here like you look at you know all these technologies, you have like mobile phone, so like that's being used by thousands of users. That's the human process of like getting things evolved. So the thing like we want to create it here is something that can either be proven by like uh, having people using the technology and then creating new like product and also like a methodology on top of it or like throughout the time after 20 years we find out that uh, really like uh, people start to can think of uh, product or material interaction level that we can embed it interaction in the time that giving that like actual dimension of the object. What we want to prove here with illusory material is really um, there is a new aspect of design which is creating different design methodologies for designers to design differently. And we want to reinvent the way how people design or think about design. And I feel we just took the bus on this wave of technologies advancement and we utilized it in design methodologies. We've all been through the, you know, the education that tells you you have to start from, for example, a problem solving task or start from a geometry or from like a user's perspective, especially in product design. And we, what we want to approve is that um, we can use technology to think freely, to redesign the way people design. Like, we want to reinvent the methodology and philosophy behind designing an object in terms of product, architecture, or anything else. And then like 20 years later, we can just tell like many others this kind of good designs, it, it could be timeless to be able to survive through time. We would always talk about what kind of design we, we want to do or like what kind of goal we want to achieve in design. I think timeless is a key word. Design is always about creativity and imagination and we want to invent a subject for people to think, mm -hmm. for people to work on, for people to continue the research um, which we started mm -hmm. now. And maybe in the future, in 10 years, in 20 years, they will look back and look at illusory material um, saying, well, that's my original inspiration. Mm -hmm. My idea actually come from the original illusory material and I might be building a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. But that's the starting point. Mm -hmm. And we want to become those kind of designer or thinkers that can truly invent um, a subject that worth um, thinking, worth researching, worth spending like your time on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's, um, that's our goal on illusory material. Um, that's what we want to achieve as a designer. Mm -hmm.